The views expressed in this blog are hosted on my own website, are strictly personal and do not reflect the views of any organization. Hello and welcome friends once again to Straight Bat, my weekly video blog, where as the title suggests, I comment with a straight bat. Now this week is World Cup final weekend, the showpiece event of the world's most popular sport. And in a World Cup of astonishing twists and turns, here's the unmistakable takeaway. The football world is now becoming flat a metaphor for an increasingly level playing field in the most competitive of sports. The mir miracle of Morocco, the dramatic rise and the manner in which the country has become the first African team to reach the World Cup semi-finals is proof that a new order is emerging in the sport, one shaped by forces linked to changing patterns of globalization. It isn't as if this is the first time a rank outsider has made it to the top bracket of a World Cup. Recall 2002 when South Korea surprised the world as host by making it to the semi-finals. Turkey finished third in that same World Cup. You can rewind the clock and you can look at famous victories by other African nations. Cameroon beating Argentina, beating Brazil this time. Uh, Senegal who beaten France, Algeria, all of them have uh, produced some remarkable upsets at World Cups. Take the clock even further back in time and North Korea had beaten the fancy Italians in 1966. Yet in most instances, these were seen as fluke victories that didn't signal a real shift in sporting power. Morocco though is different because this incredible run is built around a system that signals the transformative nature of modern sport. The most striking feature, my friends, of this Moroccan success story is the fact that 14 of their 26 member squad were born outside Morocco, many of them from the mushrooming migrant communities of Europe and beyond. Before the tournament began, uh, the hugely influential Hakim Ziyech was probably the only globalized, reg globally recognized Moroccan player because he played for the London club Chelsea in the English Premier League. Now we've got many stars, the likes of Canadian-born goalkeeper Yunus Bounou, Madrid-born Achraf Hakimi, Dutch-born Sofian Amrabat, and French-born Sofian Buffon. All of them have become household names, the new stars in the football firmament. And each of them have displayed a spirit, an indomitable spirit that has been the hallmark of the Moroccan performance. It is this triumph of the Moroccan migrant in football that according to me illuminates the manner in which just how sports can break boundaries that politics often fails to conquer. There are an estimated 5 million Moroccan migrants in Europe. They are about, there are about 25 million Arab immigrant population across the European continent. Their strong presence has encouraged at times far-right politicians across Europe to create an atmosphere of mutual suspicion, even hostility between Arab Muslims and mainstream European society. A dominant narrative that has pigeonholed Arab Muslim immigrants as a threat to national identity, domestic security and social cohesion. The beautiful game, fortunately, my friends, has time for no such stereotypes. Preferring to see sports as the ultimate platform for raw talent and equal opportunity above all else. Over 125 players who are in Qatar are playing for countries they were not born in. Even the European countries that have done well in the games are those that have embraced diversity. Take Switzerland, for example. Eight of the Swiss players at least were born outside Switzerland, including their captain uh, Granit Xhaka is of Albanian origin, as is their star player Zerdan Shakiri. This is a sign in a way of how open immigration policies have redefined societies, even seemingly closed societies like Switzerland. 
In 2018, a majority of the World Cup winning French squad was were of migrants or children of migrants. The 22, 2022 squad is no different. Many of the players trace their African roots. The wondrous Kylian Mbappe, the new superstar of world football, has a Cameroon-born father. His mother is of Algerian heritage. His prodigious talent was recognized early in club football because in club football in countries like France, you truly see multiracial activity that puts talent once again above all else. Even the English, whose football ecosystem was often seen as not inclusive enough, have now truly nurtured a team that is far more representative of this new multicultural Britain. Just contrast the Whites only 1966 team of Britain that won the World Cup then with this new generation of talent that's emerging in 2022. Makayo Saka, born of Nigerian parents, or Raheem Sterling, born in Jamaica, or the likes of uh, Jude Bellingham and Marcus Rashford, they've all become, in a way, symbols of the rise of black footballers who have become role models for an entire generation. They've just changed even the way in which England now plays football. Except the South American powerhouses, Brazil and Argentina, and some of the East European countries like Croatia, most of their players being homegrown, the rest of the world is breaking all boundaries on the football field. Which leads one to ask this question, my friends. If football can benefit from encouraging a multicultural ethos and migrant identities, why is the rest of society a step behind? Europe's far-right politicians continue to rail against a more open border policy for immigration. Britain's Brexit supporters have in a way built an anti-immigration sentiment at times in their country, as did a Donald Trump and his cohorts when they were leading the Republican charge in the United States. In India too, many local and national politicians have fostered a narrow parochial mindset that builds walls within societies. Preferential treatment to sons of the soil may be seen as a political and economic necessity by some in times of fierce job competition. But when it becomes a credo that consciously discriminates against skilled workers from other parts of the country, then it becomes a destructive force that only divides society further for electoral benefit. Recall how in 2008, North Indian migrants were targeted by the Maharashtra Navnirman Sena of uh, Raj Thakre and Bashta. Or indeed how students from the Northeast were beaten up in Karnataka because allegedly they were not speaking in Kannada language in a restaurant. Or how Kashmiris over the years have been victims of hate and bigotry in different parts of the country when they go and seek jobs. Truth, my friends, is interstate and global migration has contributed immensely to greater prosperity across geographies. The North Indian migrants who drive small and medium businesses and the service sector in Mumbai have lifted many families in UP and Bihar out of poverty. The wave of Indian migrants who went to the Gulf countries have not only built the infrastructure of those countries like the Qatar Stadium, but they've also changed the economy of their home states like Kerala, for instance, ensuring a robust remittance economy in these states. Remittances from the vast Indian diaspora across the globe to their home country were the highest in the world at $89 billion or 3% of GDP in 2021, according to World Bank data. Which is why, my friends, the triumph of the football migrant is a powerful message to India and a globalizing world. Countries that creatively promote mobility of talent across regions and nations are the ones that will grow and prosper in the future. What Moroccan football, in fact, has achieved today, the rest of the world should accomplish tomorrow. As a postscript, there is an eternal question asked ahead of every World Cup. 
When will India qualify for the World Cup football finals? Unlikely, my friends, in the near future. But who knows, if a mass sport is taken to every street corner, possibilities are endless, especially if every school-going child has an equal opportunity to play. Will that happen in my lifetime? I rather doubt it. Till then, let's rejoice in living the ultimate Moroccan dream, the miracle of the underdog. That was the straight bat. Do, of course, sorry. That was the straight bat. Do, of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel for many more such videos. For now, stay well, stay safe. Jai Hind. Namaskar.